And now, Lifestyles Unlimited presents the Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Over the next hour, we unfold your map to financial freedom. You'll learn how to retire through investing in single family and multifamily real estate. You'll learn how to create cash flow and build wealth so you can have the time and money to live the lifestyle you want. Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. I'm Mike Harrison, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. It is absolutely my privilege to be joining you today. Friends, if you've never invested in real estate, I want to tell you that while investing in real estate is great in all market cycles, really the asset, it's about the, the metrics of the property, right? Uh, it's less about the economic cycle because we look at the property, we do our evaluation, what's the out-of-pocket expense, what's the monthly cash flow, annual returns, total returns, what are we projecting? That's what we do. We do our math, and, and because of the math, we say no to many, many properties, and we say yes to the one that fits. So it's really more about the metrics of the property than it is about the economic cycle. However, I want you to understand that as Bidenomics takes effect, the market conditions to buy real estate are more favorable each and every day. We're beginning to see opportunities to buy assets that, quite frankly, we haven't seen since 2008 and 2010, motivated sellers, right? Motivated sellers that have to get out of properties. We're beginning to uncover those now. We've been talking about it for 18 months. We knew this was coming. And there's going to be more to, more to follow. But why do I say right now is a great, great time, like we haven't seen in, in years, to buy real estate? I'll tell you this. I call it the lag effect tidal wave. And it's a lag effect tidal wave that our government's monetary policies for the last Several years, I know I said Bidenomics, and we'll, we'll go more into that a little bit later, but it's, it's previous to Biden was Trump. He was printing money. Uh, Obama was spending a ton of money. W was spending a ton of money. So this is not just all on one person, okay? Don't get me wrong. But essentially, this tidal wave that we've created is beginning to crash, right? Think about a wave, a wave that builds and it builds and it builds and it grows. And then eventually it gets into shallow water and it cannot sustain its own structure, right? The, wave, the weight of the wave comes crashing down and that's starting right now. Okay, it's the very beginning. So printing trillions of dollars, then that's affected by inflation, right? You've got more dollars chasing the same amount of goods, those goods are going to cost more. And that's going to be followed, and it has been followed, by the most rapid increase of interest rates in the history of the American economy. Think about that. You think about America, 250 years old, and we're living through a time right now where interest rates have never increased at a more rapid rate. And all that combines, and it creates this great wave. And that wave is beginning to crash. I'll share some specifics, okay? I'm not just saying this. That's, I've got four specifics. Let's take one, bankruptcies. Bankruptcies are on the rise, my friend. They're, they're continuing to accelerate, both business and personal, okay? That's a, that's a statement within itself. Personal savings, right? That's... Uh, you know, the emergency fund, that's what saved a lot of American consumers over the years. Well, what has happened to con uh, personal savings, right? We came out of COVID with record high personal savings, 2.1 trillion in personal savings for the American consumers. Where are we today with personal savings? Well, I'm sad to report it's a little over 100 billion. Now, those are big numbers. Let me break it down so that you may understand this a little more. Let's say yesterday you had $21 in your pocket. Today you have $1. Let's say you had $2.1 million in the bank account. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, that was yesterday. Today you're down to 100000 Think about 100000 versus $2.1 million. Huge gap. Well, that's what's happened to personal savings. People are using their personal savings for every day day-to-day -day needs and expenses, and that personal savings is running out. And when personal savings runs out, what does everyone do? They turn to the 
Credit card. Yes, credit card. So what's going on with credit cards? Well, there's no more credit cards to max out. They're all maxed out. Credit card balances are at their highest level ever. Interest rates on those cards are at their highest level ever. 22% on average. Wow. I was reading, as I was doing research for this show, Macy's, right? I think we're all familiar with Macy's. Listen to this ridiculousness. There's a, the Macy's credit card, the interest rate is 34%. My gosh, do you really need those $400 shoes on your credit card at 34%? But I promise you, as you're listening to this show right now, somebody is doing that transaction as we speak, as we speak. So that is, that is pure insanity. And fourth, lastly, historically, when people need money, what would they do historically, right? Year in and year out. This has happened over decades. Well, people would just, they'd refinance their biggest asset, their home, their personal home. That's their bank account. They'd just go refinance it, right? Pull out a hundred grand, pay off the credit card, start fresh, or pay for college or whatever they need the money for. Well, it's really not possible today. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying no one's doing it. You'll notice the rates of refinance are, are historically low. Why? Because no one, no one in their right mind is going to give up a sub 3% or a 3% or even a 4% mortgage rate on their personal home to re-sign into a 7 plus percent interest rate. It doesn't make any sense. That's why people aren't selling their homes. They're, they're, they're not selling. They're not moving down. Now, where I'm going to get to is opportunity. We're going to talk about that, but I just kind of want to paint this picture here. But what's what's going to happen is people are running out of sources of money, right? The personal savings is gone. The credit cards are maxed out. They can't refinance the house. So what are they going to do? And they'll do this. They're going to sell assets. It's a natural cycle. All assets. You start just selling it, getting rid of it. So everything, right? The uh, the extra Jeep's got to go. The Harley Davidson's got to go. The bass boat's got to go. What else has to go? Well, we may get to a point to where we need to sell our home, our single family property. Again, it's a natural cycle. And we're seeing that cycle today. We're, we're seeing it start. And we haven't had these buy signals essentially since 2008 to 2010. Uh, they're popping up. They're popping up in single family and they're popping up in multifamily. Although the multi side of the business is much, much more intense for, for some, the same reasons and for some of some other reasons. And those are primarily bridge loans, which are essentially interest only loans, but they reset at a, at a point in time, right? Here's your bridge loan for two years. It's going to reset in uh, November of 2023, and it's going to reset into uh, this particular interest rate, right? And these properties are beginning to reset and they cannot make essentially the principal payments back based on these higher interest rates. And they're getting hit with the perfect storm themselves. Uh, to continue the analogy, right? They have the perfect storm of these loans resetting. They've got higher insurance costs. They've got higher taxes. They're not able to raise rents the, the way they were in the past. So all the predictions on these properties is not holding out. And yes, these folks are forced to essentially hand the keys over, right? So this is all, this is beginning to crash and the signs, we've been talking to that. We've been talking about this for 18 months, but the signs I'm seeing, um, this, I think this is going to be especially nasty. Do not expect uh, the soft landing. So what can you do? One, be sure your house, your financial house is in order. And secondly, it's time to take advantage of it, right? The opportunity is here now. It's time to learn how to invest in real estate. That's what we teach here at Lifestyles Unlimited. It's time to learn it and it's time to practice it, okay? Uh, and, and we're going to talk about um, the timing of that, okay? The timing of, of getting in is, is right now. Even though we look at um, properties and assets and we do the math ourselves, we do the evaluation and it's less about the market than it is about the asset. I'm going to tell you, this is one of those times where the market is going to make a huge impact in your investment. So I'm calling that um, the lag tidal wave. Uh, it's been created by monetary policy. Some people say it's Bidenomics. It's not all him, but I'll tell you what he needs to do, and he's not going to, is one, stop giving away money, right? More money chasing the same amount of goods, 
makes the situation worse. It's almost as if the White House and the Fed are at completely opposite spectrums. The White House is, how can I give more money uh, away? How can I refuse uh, or rescind more student loans? How, who, what group of people can I give more money to? And the Fed is only saying, well, that's just creating more inflation, and I'm going to have to continue to raise the interest rates. And when I do that, I'm going to crush earners and consumers. Right. And I'll tell you a second thing you can do. Just drill for more oil, for God's sakes. Make more oil available. Reduce energy cost. And if you reduce energy costs, it's not just the cost of a gallon of fuel at the pump. It will lower the cost of everything. Transportation, raw materials, finished goods, and it will add more money to the everyday American consumer's budget. But he's not going to. And the wave continues to build and it will crash. There's an economist called... Herbert Stein, maybe you've heard of him. Ben Stein's his son, pretty famous guy. But uh, Herbert Stein said in the 70s, and he was, he was talking on economic policy, he said, and, and they call it Stein's Law. It's pretty interesting, and, and I love reading stuff like this and sharing it with you. But Stein's Law says, if something cannot go on forever, it will stop. Very simple. And things like this create massive opportunity. Something else I want to share of interest, and in, I've spoken on this in the past, but many of you new listeners may not have, have heard it, but there's a symbol in the Chinese alphabet. And, and if you know the Chinese alphabet, really the symbols are have meanings, okay? So we call it an alphabet, and alphabet for us is really about a letter, but their alphabet has a, over 2,500 symbols essentially, and uh, they're kind of like a, a pictogram. I'm probably not explaining this very good. I'm, I'm trying, but there's a symbol... Um, uh, it's a combination symbol, and one part of the symbol means crisis, right? Uh, well, it's the symbol for crisis, and one part is danger, and the other part is opportunity, okay? Interesting, right? And and so that's their symbol for crisis. So when it's within a crisis, they see danger, and they see opportunity. And, and if you look that up, you read in it, some scholars will say it's a combination of danger and change point. Um, that's moot. It, it, the same meaning still applies into this market that we're going into, where there is danger, there is opportunity. And I'm telling you, there is massive financial danger out there, and there is massive financial opportunity. The wave is beginning to crash. So that, if you think about the Chinese culture, that's 5,000 years of wisdom. Think about that for a second. So this, these are natural cycles. People understand that. So my question to you is, are you going to engage in the change point or are you just going to bury your head in the sand and, and do nothing and hope things will get better and i'm telling you it's going to get pretty nasty for a while you might as well take advantage of the opportunity do i wish i was buying and investing in real estate in 2008 to 2010 that's the understatement of the year you bet i do Absolutely. I didn't get started till 2011, not because I didn't want to. I just didn't know any better, right? I didn't have the information. You have the information now. We can teach that to you. If your household is like mine, you're spending more money month in and month out. I know I am. I just got my electric bill the other day. My gosh, man, it was, it was shocking. It was unbelievably shocking. Friends, everything's more expensive food, fuel, clothing, labor, insurance, and you're going to need to combat that and change it. Right now's the time. Got questions? Call Lifestyles Unlimited at 855-497-4335. The Real Estate Investor Radio Show continues next. Lifestyles Unlimited Success Stories. If you got laid off tomorrow, what would you do? Would you have to be working at McDonald's or wait to try and find another job with the downsizing in the economy? Kept on coming to meetings, even with David Fisher online and stuff like that, but still we just like, we need to make the jump. So we kept praying for time to get this job done, to, to be able to find the properties. How do we find the properties? How do you find the time? And God answered our prayers and he got downsized from his corporate job. This house was a dog and through the rehab, I think we turned it into a little pony. You bought the house for $73,000. Correct. And your appraised value actually is $144,000. You put in forty-five dollars worth of work, so that leaves you a net equity of 11000 with a return on capital gain of 70%. 
The cash flow is $458 a month for a cash on cash return rate of 35%. In person and online learning dates at lukstudy.com. Creating the lifestyle you've always wanted. You're hearing Lifestyles Unlimited's Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mike Harrison. If you have any questions or comments for me, please send me an email, askmike at luinc.com. Also, if there's a topic that you would like me to discuss on the show, send me an email. I'll take a look at it. If I can talk about it on the show, absolutely. Uh, or if you have a question, send me that email to askmike at luinc.com. I'm a real estate investor in both single family properties and apartment communities. I'm in four different states all over this great country. Started 12 years ago, over 3,500 doors of real estate. I still kind of shock myself when I say that, that in what seems to be a very short amount of time, what a very nice large portfolio I've been able to build for myself. And I continue to build on that portfolio, okay? I have not gone silent. Why? Everything is more expensive now. Everything, utilities, food, fuel, clothing, labor, insurance, taxes, and 20, 20 other things I didn't even mention. How am I combating that? How is the Harrison household combating that? Well, I continue to invest in cash flowing real estate, right? I want to get ahead, but some of this is just to keep up. I've invested in several multifamily properties year to date. My primary reasons. I want to keep up, right? I need the extra money. Everything costs more. And so if you're not continuously building that cash flow snowball, you're not you're not getting ahead. You're getting behind. Inflation is real. And I need the tax breaks. Okay. So let me ask you this. Are you keeping up or are you sinking? Because if you're not creating passive income, you're sinking. Like most Americans. You're in the majority. In fact, most people They've got no earthly idea what we do as real estate investors. None. I don't blame them. I was one of them, but it, it's foreign to most people. And it's foreign to most people because we're affected by our surroundings, our life experiences, media. We're affected by those that have taught us. Heck, people will pay for bad information, right? Look at some of the stuff that's taught in colleges, in upper level educational institutions. Look at what's taught in jobs, right? Look at what's taught on the W-2 job. Bad information. Yeah, people will pay for bad information, but most of it's actually free. In the mail, advice from friends, family, neighbors. I'll be the first to say that my family, while they have my best interest in the world, my parents didn't give me the best financial information. They gave me the best financial information that worked for them in the 20th century, not work, works for us in the 21st century. We get advice from so-called experts, billboards, magazines, TV, commercials. It's sad. I'll even tell you this. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I spent the better part uh, of those of that week with um, two ladies. I was working on a project outside of Lifestyles Unlimited. Unlimited. It's it's a business project, and you spend when you spend the better part of a week with a couple of people, you learn a little bit more about them. Um, I knew these two ladies. Uh, from a business standpoint, I didn't really know them uh, personally, but as we're uh, working, uh, the subject of real estate ownership came up, okay? And and they didn't know that um, they have no idea that I'm a real estate investor whatsoever. Uh, I did not instigate this discussion at all. Uh, and really, it was one of the ladies beginning a conversation, and she was talking about her rent, um, how it's gone up and up and up. And she was complaining a little bit. Um, her husband doesn't work. She is the breadwinner. I'm not going to get into somebody's business. Hey, what works for you is you, right? That's the libertarian in me. You you do you, I'll do me. Um, but she, she was kind of complaining uh, about the rent. Um, and then the conversation came up about, wouldn't it be nice to own some real estate? And both of them chimed in. And what I heard was a lot of coulda, woulda, shoulda. Uh, missed opportunities in the past. And then one, she began to speak and she caught my attention. She had purchased her home for $20,000. She's in a very small town in Oklahoma 10 years ago. Okay. She bought her home for 20 grand. And then she mentioned that at the same time, she could have bought the home across the street for 10,000. 
uh, was saying, wow, I should have bought this other house so that I could rent it out to the people that live there now. And it is a rent home who owns it, but she didn't buy it. And she mentioned, well, I didn't buy it. My husband uh, doesn't work and it was a fixer upper, but he didn't sound too thrilled about fixing or painting or cleaning. And just if you're a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, you know, just the bell is ringing in my head. She even mentioned she had the 10 grand in cash, but that was going to be the majority of her savings. Another bell, bang, cash. No, I did end up speaking up. Uh, she did say that that home value today is now $80,000 and was lamenting on the opportunity. So that was the opportunity as she saw it. I explained that the opportunity that she missed was actually about 10 times more valuable than that. And I, and I shared it with her. Um, and I didn't share it with her to be mean or condescending in any way, shape or form. I like this lady. She's a great person. She's hardworking, salt of the earth. But I explained it to her because I don't want her to miss another opportunity like this. And if you missed the early part of the show, those opportunities are coming in a way that we haven't seen for 10 or 12 years. She had a lot of fear, one, because it needed repairs. Okay. She didn't need to have that fear. We teach you not to have that fear. In fact, you want the property that needs repairs. You don't want the fixed property. So that was, in her mind, number one, wait a second, this is counterintuitive to everything I understand. I told her, I said, hey, you don't, your husband didn't need to do the work. You could have basically paid to have the work done, right? You pick up the phone and you hire somebody to do it. Your husband could have overseen the work being done. He could have kept the repairs on schedule kind of blew her away. Wait, hey, I have about 10 grand. I could have bought this property. That would have been pretty much all my money. How could I have gotten the repairs done? Well, I then explained the hard money loan, the asset-based loan. Instead of spending $10,000 in the property, you're going to spend two, maybe $3,000 to acquire the property. You're going to, within the loan, have those repairs completed, and then you're going to refinance into solid 30-year fixed rate Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac loan, a stable loan. That blew her away. And I tell you what, the first time I heard about the hard money loan, it floored me as an issue. It floored me as an issue that I felt like I knew everything about finance or had at least read a little bit or had a, an understanding and I had no understanding whatsoever, and neither did this lady. Well, her eyes are open now, and she was intrigued. She could have spent the two or 3000 and got the rental property. Again, we're coming into a time now where there's going to be availability of properties like we haven't seen. There's going to be motivated sellers. So at this point in the conversation, the other lady chimed in, and she mentioned she wants to rent some of her rooms in her home that she lives in now to others. And that's called house hacking, okay? We don't teach house hacking. Um, not my style, but I have met a lot of people that have gotten started as a real estate investor with that. And if that gets you started, hey, I'm all about getting you started, right? Let's get you started. If that does it, then great. I think that house hacking could easily create bigger problems than it solves. A lot of people do this house hacking with friends, people that they're close to, that maybe makes the other person think that no big deal, they can just stay there, there's no obligation. Uh, again, owning rental real estate is a business. We need to treat it as a business. Um, we don't need to be renting to our friends or family members, but that's typically what happens with the house hacking. But the wheels in her mind were turning. And so conversation went to, well, better yet, maybe get a duplex and you can live in one side and rent the other. Again, I've met other people that have gotten started that way. That gives you a little bit of an arm's length uh, relationship with that resident. Um, better yet than that, just get the duplex. Live in your house, do your thing, and rent both sides of it out, right? And even better than that, get some single family rental property, like I said, outside of your personal residence. Conversation then turned and this lady said, well, her husband would never go for that. So there it is. The spousal, um, not interested, just doesn't have any idea uh, what this is. Has She's obviously mentioned this to him before, doesn't want anything to do with it. So then the conversation went to, yeah, we just rely on our 401ks. Um, both admitted there's not much there. 
they're in their 40s and 50s in age. And I'm just hearing in the back of my mind, they're kicking the can down the road. They are, just like millions of other people in this country. Everyone's just going to kick the can down the road. I'm telling you that we are in for a massive economic crash. And what's that going to mean? I think it's going to mean no retirement for most people out there, especially our generation. After the 401k, the other one then chimed up and said, wow, it would be great to own an Airbnb. (laughs) So they're hitting all around it, um, but they're just not really fully engaged. You know, I asked them why the Airbnb, and they both said, well, those those are nice properties versus the typical rent home. And I said, well, well, how are they then nice? And she said, well, Airbnbs are always in vacation areas. They're on the lake or on the ocean and that sort of thing. And that's why we'd like to own an Airbnb. So I think there was a, a bit of a sexy factor to it. So then I had to play devil's advocate. And I was like, well, what about cleaning? What about renting it out? What about marking? That sounds like a job to me. Uh, that had never crossed her mind. I asked, what about tax implications? That had never crossed their mind. And and I'm not saying no to Airbnbs. There's people out there that do it. It's just not in my wheelhouse. I I don't understand it. But there are a lot of successful people that are very, very successful with with Airbnbs. But when I mentioned the tax implications, it was foreign to them. It was absolutely foreign to them. So then I had to explain why owning the rental property, the single-family rental property, was indeed the best Avenue. I then explained how best product, best price ensures that you get that great resident in there. There was a lot of fear. And this was a conversation that took place over several days, okay, during during the week. So I explained the best product, best price, how that worked. I explained how rent home can be nice. I explained how you can have new appliances, stainless appliances. I explained how you can have granite, how you can have great flooring, how you can paint and fix everything, how you can put the new AC in it. I'm proof of it. I've done it on many, many homes. And that blew their mind. And then I began to talk about cash flow, equity capture, the conversation on hard money, leverage, all these things adding up, tax advantages, ease, duplication, do this over and over, appreciation, Mortgage pay down, putting your money to work for you at a high return level. I made the case for it. Will they do it? Well, I lost them when I mentioned step one is education. That's when they decided, no, I don't think I want to touch anything in real estate. We're just going to kick the can down the road. I heard a great case for huge opportunity. I heard a great case for the fact that that opportunity is here now and will continue to grow. But I don't think they uh, I don't think they picked it up. I don't think they realize their tomorrow is decided today. Tune in next week. I'm going to tell you how you can be in the top 5% of net worth earners in the U.S. And I want you to remember it's not the money. It's the lifestyle. Make it a great day. The information and opinions you hear on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.